don't understand why it's barricaded off right here when the derailment back that way. A barricade miles wide has been made and will last for the next 48 hours after a train derailed in Houston County. Good evening to you. Thanks for watching WGXA News at 10. I'm Aaron Leedy. That train was carrying car parts and hazardous materials when it derailed just after noon today. WGXA's Jayla Whitfield has been following the status of the train since it derailed. She joins us live tonight with the latest. Jayla. Aaron, it's still a very active scene. They are still working to make sure that this area is safe. It extends for five miles. Now, this derailment actually hit a gas main, and that's what caused some of these safety issues out here. I'm actually going to step out the way so you guys get a closer look at what's going on out here at this scene. Now, this is as far as they will let us back into this area. But if you look down to our left, you can see that there is a railroad track down there, but we can't exactly see where the train derailed at this time because they have it so much blocked off. We do know that that train was headed from May into Jacksonville, Florida, when 34 cars derailed. Now, the derailment blocked all lanes near Purdue Farms, and we actually spoke to people from that company. Here's what they had to say. I heard that there was um, some type of train accident, but I thought it was going to be on the other side, but apparently they're not letting people into this portion of 247. As soon as I clocked out and my phone rung and I got a call saying uh, they couldn't get down the road so I had to walk or catch a ride so I walked. Uh, we just talked to the superintendent. He said that uh, we're all excused for the considering the accident. According to the Houston County e EMA, the gas main has been taken care of and there are no hazards at this time, but roads will be still blocked for the next 48 hours. I actually want to show you guys a map, if you can pull that up in the back. It will give you a better look at an idea of where the road closures are located. Now, GDOT is urging drivers to find an alternate route in the meantime and call Georgia 511 for help. So just to reiterate, if you think that you can get through this area, you cannot. There's a five mile radius around this entire train derailment and for the next 48 hours. So if you're in the area, please find an alternative route. But for now, live in Houston County, Shayla Woodfield. Damon here with you in the Skywatch Weather Center on this Wednesday evening. Welcome on in. Well, it was a beautiful day across the middle of Georgia. Temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s for some of us. Right now here in downtown Macon from our Wilson Bryant Heating Air Skycast Network, we're in the mid 60s heading into the overnight hours. Pretty cool out there with an east-northeast breeze at about 7 miles per hour. Temperatures everywhere else in the low to mid 60s. A couple of low 70s, though, still to the southwest, 67 in Warner Robins, 73 there in Montezuma, and 72 there in Americas. The 24-hour temperature change, take a look at this. Notice that cooler air from the northeast because of that wedge pattern helping keep our temperatures cooler, which some of us have been cooler. So we're talking in Dublin, 14-degree change from 24 hours ago, and in Macon, 13-degree change from 24 hours ago. So it is cooler tonight than it was yesterday. News coming into the newsroom, though, or the Skywatch Weather Center, I should say. This morning, there was a 2.1 earthquake. I'm sure some of you felt it here in Putnam County. It occurred at 7.20 in the morning. We just got word of another earthquake, a tremor earthquake, a 1.9 magnitude, relatively in the same location there in Putnam County, and it occurred at 8.51. There's a fault line that runs through there, so it's not rather uncommon. I'll have more information on that coming up in just a few minutes. Our next cold front... What about the rain? Can we see some rain changes from that cold front and maybe some storms? I'll have the latest on that. And I'm tracking Michael as if it was a year ago this week. That and much more coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Jake, we'll see you then. A man considered dangerous is on the run tonight after police say he robbed a bank in Perry. Now, this is the man police are trying to find. They haven't released his name, but they hope this photo will help find him. WGXA's Tiffany Thompson shows you how officials are pulling out all the stops to solve the case. Diane Dewar says she's lived in Perry off and on since 1954. It's beautiful to me. It has um, just been a nice little town, and I love it. Wednesday, Dewar says after seeing helicopters and law enforcement officers circling where she lived, she got nervous. 
it was scary. I usually leave my windows open, as you can see. Uh, my kitty cat loves to sit in the window, and it scared me enough to where I got up and locked my windows. Chief Steve Lynn from the Perry Police Department tells me it was around 10 this morning when a suspect robbed the Planners First Bank in Perry. Passed a note to the teller demanding money. I got the money and then fled the scene. Chief Lynn says although there was not a visible gun, the suspect is still considered dangerous. A robbery is still a violent act, whether a weapon is displayed or not. Chief Lynn says luckily no one was hurt. He says he's just glad knowing he has the backing of outside agencies to help catch the suspected robber. We're very fortunate that we have a Georgia State Patrol Aviation Unit here in Perry that's headquartered here. So they just happened to be close by. They were actually in Bibb County and they, they came straight uh, to our assistance. I think they were uh, here within 21 minutes. In Perry, Tiffany Thompson. Also on the scene today were Warner Robins Police and the Houston County Sheriff's Office. If you have any information on this case, you're asked to call 911. Happening now, former Jones County Coroner Jerry Bridges Sr. has been indicted by a grand jury on more than 40 theft and fraud charges. According to Bridges' indictment, he stole more than $200,000 from clients while he owned Bridges' funeral home and Cedar Ridge Cemetery. Lieutenant Kenny Gleaton says Bridges stole the money from two accounts. One of the accounts was a pre-needs account, which held advanced funeral payments, and the other was meant to pay for continuing lot care at the cemetery. Developing tonight across the country, House Democrats say they'll issue a subpoena against a key witness in the Ukraine scandal for documents and testimony. It comes after the White House blocked top diplomat Gordon Sondland from testifying on Capitol Hill. Now, it's all part of the probe into whether President Trump used his power of his office to push a foreign country to investigate his potential 2020 opponent, Joe Biden. The legal fight over an impeachment inquiry continued to escalate today. The White House argues the probe is unconstitutional because there's been no vote in the House to impeach. President Trump has continued to stonewall House Democrats in their investigation efforts. The White House sent a scathing letter to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and House committees refusing to cooperate, calling the impeachment inquiry illegitimate and unconstitutional. Pelosi sent her own letter saying, quote, Mr. President, you are not above the law. You will be held accountable. And days after President Trump said the U.S. would be pulling troops back from the border area between Turkey and Syria, Turkey launched a military offensive into northern Syria today with civilians fleeing border cities. This comes as U.S. officials on all sides of the political spectrum have said they oppose President Trump's decision. Sounding the alarm for Americans traveling to China. I'm Angelica Alvarez in Washington with why one senator says he doesn't think the State Department is doing enough to warn American travelers. 